So Luke was so offended by my foam comment that he brought it to a body shop right away, got his rockers done, didn't like the blue, and he so he went with a white uh, finish. He didn't like the half ton, so they turned it into a three quarter ton. And then he didn't like that um, there was a gas, so they put a diesel in it. And then they also changed brands, and I think really, I really like this uh, upgrade, Luke. This looks much better. And I bet this is the best the Ford's ever run. <laughs> but anyway, it's roof seal day. I had to run out this morning and they're already done. One side. I'll show you guys how we do that. So now the steel is up there. We just grab it to walk to the other end. Make sure not to step on your harnesses. And we want to overlap an inch here. Uh, they did a loop. Now when you do the bottom, uh, measure each sheet and stay a perfect inch over. Just even a little bit and you can start walking your steel off the roof or then you have to start sawtoothing it and uh, looks like crap. Um, the screws go in just a hair. You don't want to start folding this, the tin in. I've, um, so you can set your clutch on your drill to fix that and then always walk on the strapping not in between um, because you will kink the steel and you know it's a good roof when your sheets are nice and straight all the way along it's a perfect job so the bottom will look the same no sawtoothing and uh, really no stretching and shrinking but when you start off with a square building you end up with a square roof and makes the job so much easier. We don't drill the top row because we put the ridge cap on and then poke through because those holes never seem to line up. So um, make sure you guys are shot from the bottom and uh, how nice and straight that turned out. And uh, we've got a gap of about two inches at the top here and on here with vented foam and a ridge cap that goes over top. The foam keeps the snow out but allows air to come in and very important to have vented soffit to let air in at the bottom and come out at the top. So here we go. This is the vented foam that uh, we use. Um, it, it goes over the rib and then this is porous to let air out but doesn't allow the bugs or snow to go in. Um, nice stuff. Lay that down in between your ridge cap and one screw on each rib for the ridge cap. Done. Simple. Here we go. That's it all done. Very nicely. Again, starting with the ridge cap at the back so that you can't see the seams from the front. And I don't know if you can see the foam under there. There it is. So see how the profile follows the foam? And then make sure that either your screws go through the foam or are on this side of the foam so that it uh, doesn't come out. But uh, we go. We do put a screw in every rib on the steel, but every other on the ridge cap is fine. So now the entire ridge is vented. If you do have 10 foot sections of ridge vent, make sure that again, uh, you center those vents on the roof and then split the difference on the end with ridge cap. It looks goofy if you've got a 44 foot building, say two 10 foot vents, and they're not spaced equally, and then a four foot gap at one end or the other um, looks kind of silly. So um, yeah, here we go. It's always nice to have the roof on, uh, nice and shady inside, starting to feel like the building's complete, right? Um, we cleaned up the job site nice. Uh, we still have to do the gable uh, steel on the both ends and install the door. So we'll do that next week. Um, today's actually a holiday, the day that the video is released. Um, and then next week, uh, we'll, we'll finish it up. I don't know whether, whether, I can't promise whether a video will be done Monday or Tuesday, but uh, next week we'll have it finishing up. We'll show you how to install an overhead door and we'll show you how to do the, the gable steel without using any uh, waste. So a couple small things to finish up yet. Um, the, the rear gable posts, um, they got the least amount of concrete, so they were in the hole the farthest. Um, I, I had to bring the building as high as I possibly could on whatever pole was the shortest on the uh, load bearing walls. Now the only thing the posts do at the back is hold the steel. 
They have nothing to do with the strength of the building or the trusses or anything, so we have to run a couple two by sixes up uh, past the post and into the trusses where it meets the strapping here. That'll secure the wall and uh, brace everything nicely. And we have to do the same with the overhead door. Um, just brace that into the trusses. Uh, the door and the header do take a lot of beating and twist. Now we cut them into the post so they're nice and strong, but this still has a little bit of wiggle. So we're gonna take that wiggle out and then uh, install the garage door and then we are done. So yeah, another good day. Um, I was in and out with uh, uh, Rick and the kids on the fleet line, which is coming nice, so look for that video. And um, we find, uh, pretty happy with how many views are on the video. Generally, it's only Cummins views that uh, get a lot. So, um, I just wanna let you know that he's gonna be working on his Cummins in this building. <laughs> so, now we can double the votes, <laughs> or the views, and uh, watch the Cummins being worked on in the shop. So, um, he's ecstatic, he's happy, he's loving it. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you love the channel, consider picking up a tape boss to make those projects go faster so you got more time to watch YouTube. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.